Hello and welcome to Rust Locker and in today's video I upgrade the tired old stock speakers in the combo van to a banging Focal 2.1 sub, mid and tweeter package. So this package was recommended to me by Dave down at Rudy Mods because I wanted a, a good sound system. I didn't want to set off car alarms or crack concrete wherever I went. I just wanted something that sounded rich and full and, and had a bit of bass and a bit of depth to it. I also wanted something that was going to be simple to install without having to hack about the van's interior too much. So I wanted to go for as close a direct replacement as I could. So included in this package is a set of Focal AS165 two-way component speakers, which consists of the 165 centimeter mids and the 1.5 inch tweeters, and also a set of crossovers. The mids are exactly the same size as the combo van standard speakers and the tweeters are a little bit larger so it is going to require a little bit of modification but nothing too crazy. Also in the package is a Focal 2.1 active sub and amplifier. Now this sub is actually powered by a built in 75 watt amp and it also sends out 55 watts to the door speakers. So that's what makes this package um, quite cool in my opinion, is the fact that your active sub isn't just powering the sub, it's also giving your door speakers a boost. So you can get this exact package at a great price from rudymods.co.uk and I've also secured a discount for my viewers only. All the details are down in the description. So if you're thinking about getting this exact package for your Corsa or Combo or any other vehicle, then uh, check out the details in the description box and you'll be able to save yourself some money. Okay, so let's crack on with the install. <laughs> Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the red power cable from the battery through to the dash. I'll just take you outside and show you. Okay, so I've removed the battery, which has given me access to the firewall. And what I've done is I've removed the glove box, which is just uh, four sort of torx screws, and um, the whole glove box comes out. And once you take the glove box out, you can see the heater um, fan. Uh, where the wiring loom for the um, fuses and relay goes. But there's a black box that's part of the heater assembly, heater fan. And next to that is a piece of firewall. So I've done a little hole right there, just drilled through with a metal drill bit. Which is just behind there. This is the end that needs to attach to the battery, so obviously I'm going to thread the non-connected end from the engine bay through there. Now it would probably be a good idea to put some sort of grommet on this hole, but because I've cut quite a, quite a thin hole there's not much movement there. Right, so now that I've got all that cable threaded through there, I still haven't reconnected the battery, I'm leaving that till last. Uh, now I've got to run this wire to wherever I'm going to have the active uh, subwoofer. Okay, so as you can see I've got the power cable routed under the um, dash here, over the top of the glove box. I've put the glove box back in. Um, it's coming out here through the radio hole at the moment, but I'm going to route this down through the uh, centre console in a minute. Uh, the radio's got to come out anyway because uh, the sub attaches to the ISO harness so that's got to come out anyway. Just used a couple of these little key things to get your radio out. Um, they don't work very well but by sliding them down and wiggling them a little bit you can get the radio to pop out. Um, so yeah let's uh, run this wire down through the centre console then we'll take a look at the wiring that connects to the back of the stereo. Well I've managed to sort of with a bit of trial and error, snake the power cable all the way down through underneath the um, dashboard. I just undid one of the screws just there to sort of flip it up. And uh, you might be able to see that red wire there. I managed to sort of get it in the channel where a lot of other wiring is, is sort of going down so that it's away from the gear stick. It's not going to get caught up when changing gear and stuff. And uh, yeah, and then I just threaded it all the way down through here, took the uh, the 
handbrake gate are off, threaded it underneath there, underneath where the ashtray is, and then underneath the carpet and out the back here. Okay, now a really cool thing about this focal sub is that it comes with this wiring harness here, which um, should just be a standard plug and play into the ISO harness on the back of your head unit. So if you've got a modern um, head unit with this ISO harness on the back, this should be pretty much plug and play. If you haven't, um, and you're still using say the factory um, head unit, then you're going to have to do either some other wiring or buy um, an ISO adapter and then sort your wiring out from there. You can check out my other video on how I wired up this stereo and replaced the factory head unit. Um, I'll link that up the top somewhere now. That will sort of tell you how to get your factory harness into a ISO harness which you will then be able to connect up to any modern head unit really. Um, so, undo the brown one, ow, and the black one, now the harness that they've given me has this end and a brown and a black so I'm going to put the brown where the brown was and the black where the black was in the back of the head unit like that and then I have this end here which I'll then connect the female ISO leads coming from the uh, factory harness same way around black at the bottom if in doubt, line up the black wire with the black wire. And you know, you've got green, whites and purples. That links up with this side here, so we know that the brown goes at the top here. Okay, so there, all we've done there is we've basically bridged the head unit ISO to the ISO coming out from the factory harness. So, that then leaves us with this long old nest of wires here which will go into the back of the sub so all this needs to be wired down through the center console as well now that's fine that's mostly where I want it to be so we've got that we've got a power cable um, I've measured the sub and it does just about fit under the driver's seat so this is where I'm going to mount it now I need to do a hole into the chassis or a piece of the um, you know, metal bodywork for the ground. Um, obviously you can't do it on painted surfaces, so I'm going to sand down a little area, drill a hole, and then mount the ground wire uh, for the sub there. Right, so it turns out there's actually already a bolt hole there for an M8, maybe it's an M10, I don't know without measuring it, but I found this uh, random bolt in uh, my bits and pieces, and that actually is the correct thread to screw in there so I think I'm going to use that as my ground point. I've sanded just the uh, ring around it so we get a good contact with uh, with the spade connector. There we go, something like that. So the wiring is fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Um, the ground, your blue wire which is the remote on and the 12 volt all just sort of screw into these uh, terminals here. Um, if you're setting up the stereo the same way as I'm doing, then you just need to plug in this six block here and this then runs to the head unit. You don't need to worry about the low level uh, input. If you were going to use these low level inputs, then you wouldn't be able to use this full six block. You would have to um, disconnect this and just use the four block for the speakers um, because these kind of do the same things. So it's just two different ways of wiring it up. So I'm ignoring these, not going to use those, just plug that in and then that goes to the head unit. So the only other thing to wire up is if you if you want to, you can wire up a remote control. It just goes in the front there, straightforward to wire up. And essentially what that does is it gives you a little rotary knob here which you can uh, lower or raise the base. So um, I've got this set up just at the centre console. So if you're driving along, you've got the tunes banging. You can uh, turn your bass down a little bit if you stop at the traffic lights so that uh, you don't annoy anyone too much if that's something that you want to do. But uh, I'm, I've set it up anyway and it is quite a good sort of control 
just in case you get a tune that's a bit too bassy, you can just notch the sub down a little bit without having to pull the seat forward and get to it. Um, so all of that's all wired up super duper. Now I just need to uh, get to the door cards and start working on the speakers. Uh, okay, so removing the door trim from the doors, the first thing you want to take off is this piece here, which houses the tweeter. Um, you can take off your mirror adjustment knob, <laughs> whatever that's called. And now the, the trick with this is it's got those little plastic clips behind here. So what you want to do is kind of lift up and out a little bit like this. And then kind of just peel it off. So as you can see on the back of this uh, tweeter cover, you have these little white clips which live in there and they pop into the holes here and here. So you can see that some have come out okay and some have been left in the door. Um, you can lever these out gently and sometimes you can save them, but more often than not, you end up breaking them in some way or other, like that. So you probably will need to buy yourself some more of those clips. I'll have a link down in the description to where you can get them from. So that's the tweeter cover panel off. Underneath there reveals a Torx head screw, so you want to undo that there. Now you can pop out the tweeter to give yourself a bit of space. Okay, so the next thing you want to take off is the door handle trim around here. There's another Torx head screw hidden behind here, so you want to lever this off evenly all the way around. And then there's another Torx head screw behind that. There's another Torx head screw behind uh, in, inside this hole there. And now you need to get the window winder off. There's basically there's a, there's a circlip behind the um, plastic trim part. There's no way you're going to be able to see but essentially there's like a little u-shaped clip and you need to ping that off so if you lever it away, you can kind of see it a little bit better. Okay, so you can, what I've done is I've loosened the circlip behind there. I'm just managing to get a bit more purchase behind it and ping the clip across the garden. There it is. Okay, so once you've taken that circlip off, put that somewhere safe. The window winder handle should just come off. Okay, now there's another two Torx head screws underneath the door card. Now, what you need to do is get this trim, the window trim, up and out. So you do need some kind of uh, lever tool to gently break the seal. And then once you get it going, it's pretty easy to get the rest of the way out. Now assuming I haven't forgotten anything, it should just pop off and lift up. Yeah, 
That's the door card off. Here's the tweeter that we're going to replace and the mid speaker as well. Um, so just uh, undo these. Now you can see from the OEM speaker here, it's specially made for the door card. Um, it actually brings the whole speaker forward about an inch, inch and a half. And uh, that is so that the magnet clears all the uh, window mechanism and wires and stuff back there. So you, with the uh, focal kit, you are gonna need the spacers or the uh, speaker spacer adapters, which are just these plastic ring things here. And uh, that will space that new aftermarket speaker to the adequate uh, position so that the magnet clears all this stuff behind there. So these are the spacer rings, you need these. So I've attached the speaker rings just using the standard Torx screws that came out of the old speaker. That's on there nice and sturdy. So you've got some, uh, you've got four wires down the bottom here for your main mid speaker. Two of those are coming from your head unit and two of them are coming up here and coming to the tweeter. Now these two wires you don't need. So what we need to do is we need to find out which two wires those are and get rid of them. And unfortunately that does mean cutting this plastic here, but you can always tape it up again. We're just going to do a neat cut along the bottom, just so that I can get, you can get your hand in there. Maybe a little bit around the side. And that's going to enable us to work out which wires are which. Okay, so I'm left with the two wires that are actually coming off of the loom there, and, uh, and I've got rid of the two wires that were going to the tweeter. So these are the two that we want. Now the brown and the yellow, in my case, is the plus, and the yellow is the negative. So we're just gonna leave them dangling down there for now, because we're gonna attach some new speaker wire leading to the crossover. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna mount our crossover somewhere in the door panel or door card here. So I'm gonna actually fit mine in this foam here by cutting out a uh, shape so this will fit in there snug and um, a little channel for the wires. Somewhere around there should be fine. You might be able to mount this somewhere else. You'll need to think about it. They are quite chunky crossovers with this focal kit, but um, Hopefully that means good, but uh, it does create a few problems when trying to mount it, but I think that's gonna go well there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut around that, I'm gonna mount this in there, and then we can start running some wires. Right, well it took a little while because this foam is proper tough, but uh, as you can see, I've now cut out a perfect shape for the crossover to go with a little speaker wire channel here, and uh, that door card is now ready to go and be wired up. Right, what I've done is I've run a bit of wire, sort of threaded it through roughly where the tweeter wire goes. That's for the new tweeter. You don't need it to go too far up here because the tweeters come with a bit of speaker wire pre-attached. You just need to uh, join them together. So that's running down here and then I've left myself a little bit of slack here to wire it up to the crossover before I put the door card back. Um, I've connected up a extra bit of wire to the uh, plus and minus speaker wires from the head unit uh, just to give myself a bit of extension again because that's going to be going to the input um, pins on the crossover and then I've also left my given myself another sort of uh, little 80 centimeter stretch just through here that's going to be for wiring the speaker the mid speaker up to the crossover here so all the wires are threaded up through there and in the right place so now I've just got to wire them up to the crossover and uh, connect up the speakers. So here's the crossover, you just need to undo these screws and, the, and then put the correct wire through, tighten the screw down. These crossovers come with a plus or minus 3 decibel adjustment and because I'm having the tweeters above the mids then the manual advises to switch this to minus 3 decibels. As you can see I've got the uh, crossover all wired up there leading up through the gap here one coming out for the speaker now you will have to crimp on some speaker connectors um, but that's fairly straightforward if you've got yourself a little uh, crimping tool 
ports and pliers. Next thing is to connect this to the speaker and then mount that. Here we've got the mid speaker and the speaker grill holder. Um, I'm not actually going to be running the grill because this is going to be behind the door card but I am going to use the grill holder because that does actually space it out by another few mil. Okay, so the speaker's in, I'm all wired up, I've cable tied up these wires a little bit and uh, the crossover is in the door card, so now all I need to do is offer up the door card, kind of tuck these wires in down under there as best as I can. So when it comes to fitting the tweeter, I'm going to use the standard tweeter location. The only problem is it only fits the standard tweeter. The new tweeters won't fit in that hole precisely. So I'm going to cut out this circle a little bit bigger than it is at the moment, which will allow me to fit the tweeter in there. So I'm just going to draw around where I want it to go and then cut that hole out. Right, so I've cut my hole and you can see how that is a really snug fit. It's actually taking a bit of force for me to push it in. If you did go a bit too big, I suppose you could put a little uh, blob of glue around the inside here just to hold it in place. But uh, I like to make things nice and tight without using glue, so that's how I'm doing it. Okay, on to the next bit. Right, so now I've got my, I've wired up the tweeter wire, just using a couple of uh, butt connectors onto that wire I ran earlier. And now the tweeter panel is ready to go back on. So the easiest way to refit your wing mirror cover is to make sure that you've got your clips located in the little notches that hold them like that. Run your speaker wire down a little bit into the hole. And get the whole thing lined up. Just right where the holes are. And then It should click back on like that. And then you just get your rubber thingamajig for the wing mirror. And you can kind of feed that in. Like that. And then you just want to put your door card back on the same way you took it off, doing up all your screws. Except when it comes to the window winder, you want to take your little circlip from earlier and you want to pre-fit it in to the little slot there then put your disc over like that and then if you get the grooves lined up right the window winder handle should just snip in there we go like that so now all that's left to do is test the system and play with some settings. Now I'm no audio expert by any means so I've done a little bit of research on the internet and I've set this up um, to what I think is probably a good sort of setup for you to start with and then you can tinker with it from here. Um, these first two sort of uh, dials on the on the left hand side are for your front speakers that's the amplification to the front and the frequency crossover um, for the high pass filter. I have set my gain up pretty high, um, but you can also turn it down and then turn it up from the stereo, or you can turn it down on the stereo and turn it up here. That's up to you for personal preference. High pass, I've set that fully to 150 hertz. Moving along to the sub settings, I've turned the gain up quite high. Um, I've turned subsonic down really low because I want all of the bass. 
I've turned the base boost up to about three quarters of the way um, and the remember the remote will also sort of have an effect on the amount of bass coming out of your uh, sub as well and the low pass filter I've set all the way up to 150 hertz as well um, from the research I've done effectively this setup with these high end low pass filters means that anything above 150 hertz will get sent to the front speakers but anything below 150 hertz will get sent to the sub I've run these settings and I think that that's a good starting point for anyone. Um, if you're more of an expert, obviously, you'll, you'll be tinkering with this. But if you're unsure, then this is a good sort of first setup. So the only thing left to do now is to drive around and enjoy some tunes. Okay, so it's a little bit difficult to test out a sound system and show you on camera the how it sounds because it um, doesn't matter how it sounds to me, it has to go in through the microphone on the camera and then get played out through your headphones or your laptop speakers. You're not going to get the idea. But what I can do is drive out to the middle of nowhere and open the doors, turn up the system, walk away from it and give you kind of an idea about how loud and clear it is. I don't know if this is going to work, I'm going to give it a go. Let me find a bit of, let me find a bit of royalty free music. A bit of dubstep, that'll do. Turn it up a bit. That's not even full blast. And it's pissing down with rain now, I'm getting wet. That give you more of an idea about the uh, how good the system is. Honestly, honestly, when you get the settings all set up and dialed in, it I for me it goes louder than my ears can actually take. So you know, some of you proper bass heads out there, you're not looking at this. But if you want something that sounds super good, rich, clear, bassy, fills up the cabin nicely, then this is the package for you. Hope you've enjoyed this video and you will subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description and I will catch you on the next one.